guys! As you might know, I really enjoy painting with coffee since it is this really fun medium to work with. Over the years, I have made quite a few coffee paintings and I learned a few things along the way. Today, I will share some of my tips and tricks for painting with coffee. If you have been following me here on YouTube, you might know that I already made a video a long time ago with tips and tricks for painting with coffee. But as I said, this video was made a long time ago, four years to be exact, and in time I have come across more things that are worth mentioning. And the old video is my first video with voiceover and I'm kind of struggling so it's not the nicest one I ever made. <laughs> Therefore, today will be tips and tricks for painting with coffee part 2. Since I am not going to explain it in this video, I have an entire video dedicated to what I use exactly to mix my coffee shades. So if you're interested in that, the link will be somewhere in the screen and also in the description box below. Today we will demonstrate the tips and tricks on these two eyes. The left one will be the don't side and the right one will be the do side. Where all the tips will be applied to. Now I know that these do's and don'ts videos sometimes really exaggerate the differences between the two sides, but today I don't want to show you a bad and a good painting, I just want to show you how your painting will look different if you apply these tips. Let's start with the basis of coffee painting, your supplies. I'm using a variety of coffee shades, water to clean my brush, a tissue to dry my brush, some watercolor brushes and watercolor paper. This already brings me to the first very important tip, which is to use watercolor paper. It doesn't really matter how expensive your watercolor paper is. I have Kenson watercolor paper that I use for bigger paintings and really cheap watercolor paper that I use for experiments or sketches. So, no matter the quality of the watercolor paper, the difference between watercolor and normal printing paper is huge. Here I am taping down one piece of normal printing paper on the left side and a piece of cheap watercolor paper on the right. You will see that the coffee bleeds through the printing paper the moment it touches it. And because it immediately wrinkles, there will be puddles of paint all over the place. Also, you cannot really blend colors because the paint sinks into the paper instead of laying on top of it. So yeah, if you expect to have a fun coffee painting experience on normal printing paper, you can be sure to be unpleasantly surprised. My second tip is more of an optional tip. I find that my paintings have a lot more detail when I start off with brown color pencil as a base for my painting. For instance, painting hair or eyelashes is a lot easier with color pencils because you have a sharp tip to work with. Furthermore, the color base helps you during the painting process as to where to place your different tones and values. I can understand that some people might prefer to have a 100% coffee painting and they do, that they would leave out the pencils. But I used to work a lot with color pencils, so for me this is a perfect way to combine my two favorite mediums and I still feel that the coffee adds something so unique to the piece that the, pencils, the pencil layer doesn't steal the show as to say. In the end, we will be able to compare both versions and you can decide for yourself which one you like best. Before we add any paint, I like to quickly tell you another little trick. If you want to have clean edges around your painting, make sure to use some kind of tape. You will see in the end that this will make your painting look so much neater. Now, let's move on to the real work. On this piece of paper, I'm going to show you that dropping paint somewhere you didn't intend to drop it isn't the end of the world. There are several ways to remove or lighten parts of your painting. 
For your first one, I am using a piece of tissue to absorb some of the paint and thereby I am making it lighter. This only works when the paint is wet, so you either have to be quick or dip your brush in your cleaning water and bring your paint, dried up paint back to life. The second way also involves the brush. Make sure your brush is dipped into your cleaning water and almost dry. Now go over the parts you want to lighten and your brush will absorb some of the paint. And this will change the overall shade. Now I am dipping my brush into my cleaning water again and I am adding water to the part I already applied to loosen the paint. So I can absorb it, absorb it even more with the tissue. You do have to be careful with the tissue method, because if you use this too often, it will slowly damage the paper. I am using cheap watercolor paper here, and you can already see that it is starting to tear up. The next step is kind of similar to the previous one, but in this case we don't necessarily want to lighten the tones, but we want to create an even background. Coffee can be really tricky to work with, since it creates funny patterns and textures when it dries. If you use the tissue to drag down the paint, you prevent the formation of puddles and you create a smooth and even background. As you can see, the overall tone does lighten a bit, so you have to work with several layers if you want to get an even and dark background. While well, in some cases you want to have a smooth background, in most cases, however, the interesting way the coffee dries is what makes it so unique. You can easily take advantage of this by tapping your brush with paint on a wet piece of paper and letting the coffee do the work. When it dries, it will create the illusion of detail. An example I want to show you is a painting I made of Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander in Fantastic Beasts. Now, he has a lot of freckles and details in his skin, and I tried to replicate this by letting the coffee do its work, and this created a lot of random details. Here you can see what the dried version looked like. Overall, with coffee, it's easy to let go of details and just let the coffee decide. The next tip is all about a wide variety of tones. In my video about mixing coffee shades, you can see that I always mix a lot of colors. This is important for making your painting look more lively and create more contrast. To show you how big this difference is exactly, I will only be using 3 medium tones on the left eye painting and all of my tones on the right painting. Even though I am adding multiple layers on the left eye, it will never get that same dark color as the right eye. It might be interesting to know that for my lighter tones I do not only use coffee, but I also use dark tea to create more of a yellow tone. I find this a very subtle tone for backgrounds, skin or in this case the white of the eye. As you can see, I am switching between the left and the right eye. In this way, the paint can dry while I work on the other eye. For the sake of this video, the contrast might have been bigger if I first did one and then the other, but I am not particularly patient when it comes to letting paint dry, so this is the best way to prevent me from ruining it. At some point, I felt like the left eye was not going to get any darker, so I labeled it done. Now, it's time for the most satisfying part of this entire process, peeling the tape off. This is quite cheap tape, so it's not perfect. But still, I think we can all agree that peeling tape deserves a special place in every artist's heart. And with that being the last tip, it brings us to the end of this video. You can decide for yourself which version you would like better. I hope you enjoyed watching this and that it might encourage you to give coffee painting a go.